In this tutorial, I'm going to show you a big multidisciplinary database, um, which means multidisciplinary means um, that it covers a big range of topics, not just the sciences, for example. So, of course, we are on the library's website going to click Article Databases, and in the Select Database by Title menu, I'm going to click S. The title of the database we're looking at is called Scopus. S-C-O-P-U-S, and then I'll just scroll through this long list and find it. Um, this isn't an entirely full text database. A lot of the stuff is just going to be abstracts only, so just those brief, brief descriptions of articles. Um, but don't worry, because it's still a really good database, and we can often borrow the stuff that's referred to in this database from other um, libraries for free. Well, I mean, for you it's free. Anyway, I've done my good old reliable search term here. The default is that it will search in the article title, the abstract, and the keywords that they give to articles, the database people. Um, I've also selected my standard date range because I'm predictable like that. And these are the other subject areas right here that this database covers. So I mentioned that it covers the sciences, life science, health science, physical science, it also covers the other kind of science, social sciences and the arts and humanities. Anyway, let's continue searching. So we've got 19 documents and that can mean, well, I'll show you the different document types. That can mean stuff like articles, conference papers, short surveys, conference reviews, yada yada yada. There are many document types, but you guys already know that. So anyway, 19 is a pretty good round number. <laughs> Not exactly round, but I'm willing to look at 19 titles and see if anything strikes me as awesome. So from here, I'm going to be the first to admit that this is kind of a busy looking database, but it's actually really, really flexible and good. It's only busy because they give you lots of options. So how's that for a silver lining? I uh, just clicked on the a title of an article and here's the abstract, but the thing that you're going to be most interested in here is the download PDF. So here's the trick with this database. I'm going to click the download PDF button, link, sorry, and it will open another window. It will allow me to create an article title here, say where I want to download it to. Here's the trick. You must check this little box um, to download the abstract if the full text isn't available, and we won't know until we click Begin Download. So, so that's where it's kind of a gamble. A lot of this stuff is available in full text, maybe not from this database, but linked to other databases from here. Um, some of it isn't. So I click my download, and Oh, sadness, it's the abstract only. So I can read the abstract, and now I have a PDF of it, but here is the abstract, right? But all is not lost. Remember what I said about linking to other databases? If you click this button here, or if you're in the, the big results list with all 19 results, there are a bunch of um, SFX buttons, see? here and here and here. Every single article has one. Um, so if I click that button it will tell me whether full text is available or not. And this is sort of a sad case where it's not available. But on the upside you can get it through interlibrary loan. Unless it's some like totally obscure rare article, which I am kind of doubting in this case, because it's from a, a pretty well-known publication. It's called The Chemical Engineer. Um, anyway, if you click Interlibrary Loan, uh, you can order this article from another library. And all you do, I'll show you how to do this in another tutorial, but here's the, uh, like the quick and dirty version of what Interlibrary Loan is. So you can borrow items from other libraries by submitting an online request and you have to fill out 
citation information, like the name of the article, the author's name, the title of the journal, the date it was published, and that's it. Um, the great thing about information now is that it's most often available digitally. So even if we don't have an electronic copy, somebody is pretty much bound to have an electronic copy. And the turnaround time for interlibrary loan is usually pretty quick for those things. Unless it's a physical item, then it can take any number of days. But if there's some library who, who has a, an electronic version of it, somebody who does have a PDF, they can just turn this request around probably within the same day most of the time. Um, anyway, that's interlibrary loan and it's really great and I'll show you how to do that in another tutorial. So how is that for a real life example? Something where I can't get a PDF when I want it. Let's see if this one will give me a PDF just so you see what it looks like. Begin download. Oh, and the database remembers stuff for you. Oh no, this one's abstract only too. Okay, I swear some of these are available in full text. Take my word for it. One of the times that you click download PDF, you'll actually get a full text article. Not always, clearly, but sometimes. Anyway, um, that's it. Scopus, huge, pretty much science-related database, but multidisciplinary as well. Um, yeah, that's it. Let me know if you have questions.